Yes. And then people took advantage of this and started using it to actually spy on other people's um, WhatsApp messages. Again, before WhatsApp brought what we call the end-to-end -end encryption, people were actually doing what was in the middle and they were using the app to hack into many people's phones. And before we paid, uh, WhatsApp team and then patch that particular problem. So technology um, developers have good intent by using sometimes use those platforms to abuse anybody that they mean they can actually abuse on them. So what are the issues we want to discuss today? So we are talking about very important issues that you and I should adduce our minds to, right? And what are they? Sorry, let me do some music. Okay. So the issues are this. I have actually categorized the risk online for children into what we call the four main C's. Okay, the four C's. And uh, the four C's are this. We have what we call the conduct. So when a child goes online, exposes himself to the risk on the internet by his conduct, okay? Second one is by what we call content. And I will explain what does that mean briefly. And then there's another one called his risk can also be escalated by what we call his contact. And the last one is what we call commercialism. Commercialism. These are critical, okay, issues that every parent wants to look at. So let me start with the conduct. So what is conduct? Conduct may be the way a child will put himself into by his own behavior online. For example, many children are sharing too much information about themselves. And I have two parents that the more data your child has on the internet, the easier it is for any cyber criminal to attack you. Or hey, if your child has too much data of himself shared online, then he is vulnerable to any cyber criminal. And, and when I'm teaching my cyber security class on the world call, there's a there's a topic I handle called reconnaissance. If you want to hack any system or anybody, um, what you have to do first of all is to gather data about the entity, about the person, or about the system. So gathering of the data is critical to any in the strength of any security as well as cyber, cyber criminal. So the more information your child is giving out there, the more vulnerable the child is putting himself out and the family as a whole. That's about conduct. The second one is about content. Content. So what is content? Any inappropriate um, uh, information a child may come in contact with in their quest to assess good Good, uh, what you call a good resource on the internet. So I tell you, go and want to learn about balloting, and want to learn follow good friends and do a number of things. And then as he's doing that, accidentally will stumble upon some content and sway them. So for example, there's a pop-up that will come and say, have you seen this beautiful girl? And then the child will click and put the side. The side will say, click on this one. You see somebody's um, sex video leaked and children will be killed. They will actually be spoiled. Being on the views of the child and taking them to a very, very funny side. So the content itself can be dangerous to your child. And I'm setting the foundation for us to look at the apps. Now let's look at the, the third one, which is the contact. What is the contact? The contact are the other human beings that have the same opportunities and the same privileges that is given to your child by the app developer or by the system or the platform. Let's think of, for example, Facebook is a social media app and gives everybody the same opportunity for you to upload your pictures, connect your friends, and Facebook will not tell you that because you are a gay person, you can't be on a platform, and because you are a lesbian, you can't be on a platform, and because you are a drug dealer, you can't be on a platform. Any human being who can click the mouse has access to the same platform your children are having. And that's very interesting. So, bullies. 
and groomers, people who want to come and recruit children, are all contact potentially your children can be meeting. So the contact is also a very huge risk. And that's what the parent has to look at. Let's look at the next one, which is called the commercialism. Now, every developer develop applications to directly or indirectly actually monetize or make money out of those platforms. Okay, so when it comes to commercialism, what does it mean? Many young people are unaware of the hidden charges, for example, that are embedded in the games and apps they use. Okay, and I wish I can take my time to address this, but this is not the focus of my intervention today. But, um, but let me say a bit, a bit about this. For example, some people want to play some games and they play a game to some point, and then the app will tell them that they have to buy some currency somewhere to be able to go to the next level. And at, the, at that time, the child is curious and uh, excited to go to the next level. And this alone can be used to have create a lot of problems for many young people who are lovers of games and who are lovers of uh, applications that actually give excitement. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, now to the meat of my intervention. And I've set the tone that the four main areas could talk about content, talk about contact, talk about conduct, talk about commerciality. They form the basis on which all risk happen as far as your child protection is concerned. Now, let today, today, for today, I'm actually narrowing our intervention on the apps. And the first number one app I'm talking about today is what we call the TikTok app. If we're a parent or a team, um, you will definitely by this time have heard about TikTok. TikTok is not very old application like Facebook or Instagram. It's about two years old. Um, it was bought, um, another application was bought some years back and then they couldn't do well and TikTok bought it in 2018. So we are less, this company is about three years old, less than three years old. But as I speak to you today, TikTok has garnished over 2 billion downloads by the end of 2020. That's what this application has done. It has done very well. Today, it's the fastest growing social media platform, okay, for the age demogra demographic between 13 and 24 years. Many young people are going there. But how is this TikTok app? This application was developed in China. It's a free social media app, okay? That is designed for users to create and share short videos. Okay. Users are not allowed only to share what they watch, but they can also use other people. Okay, and we will call the lip sync and dance, but also can create their own content. So young people are creating their own content on this platform. Typically, uh, the videos are recorded in 15 seconds clip, and users can add additional effects. Before, before they can share it on those platforms. Users can do what we call live streaming with the videos. Uh, there's an, another third part of it called Lead.me and interact with audiences via chat function. Very exciting application. I was telling some friends that this application brings all the excitement from Instagram and Snapchat and jam them together. That, that's how powerful it is. So the beautiful part of these two major applications brought together to form the TikTok. It's very, very exciting. If you have a very old person who there, you can enjoy it. But it doesn't have any risk, okay? For the purpose. Why, why should parents be worried about this app? How most TikTok videos are harmless, okay? Uh, they are creative, fun, and they are real. There are it creates fun and, and they, are, they are searching for many young people. But it's that there are real concerns parents need to be aware of. Okay? And let me address you there. For instance, we talk has a dark side in which it has become the big that attracts sexual predators uh, to prey on young people. Let me establish that TikTok application um, allow it doesn't have age authentication to so anybody from 13 and above can actually sign up. And sometimes from the report I've seen. Some people are even below 10, they are signing up to it. Now, the, the fact there are counter reports of older men actually spying and lacking on our sellers, sending teen 
and twins explicit DMs, DMs with just direct messages, without payment for the platform. And creditors are using these features. So let me tell you one of the features. There's a feature in TikTok called Duet. And you know, in Ghana, when we talk about Duet, we're talking about what we call collaboration. It's if they say, uh, or champ economy and then musician come together, they form a collaboration. But there's a duet, like the same talent coming together to form a musical, another musical, another content. And you can do that even remotely. You can do it in Ghana or somebody in Saudi Arabia. You can form a duet. On the so the firm has a very beautiful, beautiful, um, what do you call it, um, features. Now, and because of this design uh, architecture, the algorithm steer people, okay, to video content via other feature called for you page. So if a sexual predator just keep liking videos of younger girls, those types of videos are going to keep coming up for you pages. Now let me explain this to you. Now. If you look at the algorithm that runs behind Facebook, okay, it's an algorithm for what we call, uh, um, I, I use a term called the Mark Zuckerberg business model. And now that's how it works. That module allow anybody who posts boring things to be punished. And how do we know something is boring? So when Facebook started, for example, when you put a picture on your Facebook platform, all those who have liked your pages or your friends are allowed to be engaged, allowed, allowed to see it. Today, it's not like that. Today, when you post something on Facebook, the algorithm now randomly show that picture to between 1% and 3% of those who have, who have liked your page. And the reaction, the algorithm then engages the excitement or otherwise of that content by the reaction of those friends. So when I post anything on Facebook and nobody likes it, nobody comments on it, nobody um, share it, automatically the algorithm then assumes that that particular content is boring and it starts pushing it down. Now, so what video fans are doing at, on TikTok is that because the same principle works here, what they are basically doing is that they like this young girls, like you are 10 years, you are 15, uh, uh, 12 years old, and you don't know what you are about, but you post video. They will make sure that video goes by. That video is seen by them. They will just like it, share it, and then comment on it, and they will blame on it. And then the more they do that, the more many other people will see it. Now, why is this so? It's because the, the application itself is by default, okay, an open or public, uh, uh, what do you call it, application. So when you actually sign up, by default, your application, your 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 status or whatever you're feeling is public. Anybody sees it. If you have not gone into the private setting to actually activate the private setting and restrict who can see and who will not see, any human being on earth can see whatever you are doing. And that actually gives video files and other dangerous characters a lot of powers to abuse the other people on this platform. Okay? So, what must you do? You no, know, I've said, let me, let me reemphasize this. The app by default has a public user profile. Okay, when somebody sign up for TikTok, their user profile and account are public by default. What it means that anybody can see it. Anybody is not restricted. Before your child go on the platform, you have to make sure that you go into the settings and find out whether you can activate the private settings before the child can go on it. Now. Just like any other social media platform, there are bound of inappropriate content on the site. And, and because TikTok is mostly used on musical videos, music videos, there is plenty of profanity. And you know it. I, I think you have seen some of the videos that I shared on what's Insta, uh, uh, what's up, Insta. Most of the videos that I shared on what's up, you can see that there. there are a lot of profanity okay, uh, in those videos. And there are a lot of aggression. There, is a, there, there are a lot of um, trial of bullies and all of that on the platform. The content itself is to sexualize in terms of dancing. Okay, there are periodic uh, um, um, challenges, and I, 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 we have done a topic on uh, why your child will actually be engaged in what we call social media viral challenge. That's another 
big topic we talk about and we talk about another time. Well, we have done part one so that we can do it again. But these are the things that you have to look at. I was talking about the content your children are sharing. But one well, nothing new to discover that the social media have collected data on each user. You know, every dream they have got collected data on each user. It's always important that parents remember that this aspect, you have to you collect your information. So you have to note that and know what kind of information or data will I allow my children to be using. All right? Let me come to the final part of TikTok. Now, TikTok is a very good application for entertainment, for collaboration, for everything, a social media app. But a parent will have power to protect his or her kids on this platform. So what, what do we do as a parent? Let me give you some tips. If we're a teen, uh, if, if, you, if your child is a teen or a twin and is using TikTok, or if you are considering allowing your tweet teen, you know, maybe 13 years or 14 and they are worried you want to go on the platform, there are some tips you can take to keep them safe while using the app to interact with your friends. That's one of the things I want to do. One, have an open discussion or dialogue with your kids about the apps. The app, that app called TikTok. I want to, I want to, this is you have to have a discussion with them about the dangers. Two, take your time and read through the privacy and security information provided in the app website. There's, an, there's a website, TikTok.com. Go to the site and read about the information about your privacy and security. Just to inform your mind about what to educate your children on. And let's go to the next. Ensure the settings are set to privacy private. Because by default, the app profile is public. All right? And all of that. So let's go to the next app. And then we can come on YouTube. The app number two is YouTube. Now we know that YouTube has is a, is a place for video sharing and for content. So you can uh, be there and, uh, and learn, post video, the following post video. So that's a very interesting and good purpose. But I won't waste time here. What should you be worried about as parents? Um, so it also has a lot of. Um, mature content on the platform as well. Um, some of the comments that are made of young videos are extremely, extremely inappropriate and helpful. If you have a sensitive child, you don't have to burden them with that kind of platform that um, will hurt them most of the time. Sometimes pedophiles are, are using that platform to also harvest. And there are very interesting stories I can't share because my time is very limited. Interesting stories about pedophiles that use the platform to educate young minds and groom them out of their own beliefs, out of their own principles in life to something else. And when I'm talking about dark web, maybe next month I will handle that as well. Now, so how do you deal with um, the YouTube application? So, each application, if your child is you know, 18 years, it's very important that you download the app for kids. It doesn't give you 100% privacy and security, but it is better, comparatively better than allowing them to use the mainstream YouTube app or the web application. All right? Let's go to house party. I won't be able to handle other apps, but I'll do a few of them, and we can sign up, and maybe another time we can come back to it. I'm interested in that, and this particular topic we come back to it. So house party has a purpose. What's the purpose of house party? House party is also a video chat and app that is pretty open. It's open. Uh, you can have friends communicate with each other who like it. And when it comes to video chat, when it comes to text, that's where many young people are having uh, heaven on earth experience. They really enjoy it. Okay? So it's one of the apps that many young people are interested in using. So let's come to um, house party. So there's no screening of the video because it's a live video, okay? And once there's no screening of those videos, there's a probability that your child will chance upon many inappropriate content. And because the people that you're actually meeting, they are not people that most of the time are 
halted. Like you know, they, have, they don't have the same faith you have. They don't have the same belief you have. They don't have the same principle you have. You can actually remain take the boat that will actually use even your platform for the uh, use the platform for a reason that is forward. Another thing that can happen is that the content your child is actually being on the platform can be screenshot and can be shared without his or her consent. That's called a tender. Tender is a dating application, okay, and it's for eight years plus. Unfortunately, it does not have age appropriate mechanism to assess whether somebody is really 18 or not. Another biggest problem all of us are having as parents. If the app is for 18 years or 20 years, it will mean that a child who is 10 years is not protected when they are found on the platform. If Facebook, for example, gives you an application that if you are 13 years, tell us you are 13 years. If you go and say you are 18 years, what it means is that Facebook algorithm then allow things that are rated 18 to hit your account. And as I tell parents that it's not even probably like getting an account for your child who is even 13 years. It's not proper for you to use your own email address to create the account. It's very proper to you create a new email address and on that email state the right age of the child because the technology itself has a way of protecting or limiting things that are age inappropriate to hit your child if you are able to tell them the right age. So don't connect with your child to glide against it. And I've seen parents that their child is 10 years and the child will think and they will go to Facebook, Facebook say, no, we don't allow you to be here, we are 10. The parents will lie to Facebook that the child is 16 years. When you do those things, you are rather hurting yourself because ultimately the algorithm will allow anything that is mature to hit the timeline of that child and subsequently we end up that somebody will pop up in there as part of the contacts. So you know, remember, the content, the contact, and the conduct that will be bringing out against the child. So as a parent, you have to be very careful. You can't use all your time for them, your children, but you have to be a bit available to protect them. And that's, that's part of it. So what is the problem with Tinder? Tinder actually is linked to Facebook, although it's 17 year old plus, it's a dating application. Because it's linked to Facebook, the app is able to accept every registration from Facebook. And Facebook age limitation is 13. And that's the worrying part. So if, if although Tinder is 17 year old rated, if your child is 13 is on Facebook, you can still have access to the platform and then become somebody there. Okay? And if you are 13 years and you go on the platform, because the app does not expect a 13 year old to be there or a 12 year or a 10 year old to be there, all the issues that the app is going to run on their timeline and their experiences and the people that they will allow to contact your child and all of them will be mature. And it may even have effect on who will have access to your home. One of the dangers of Tinder is that it has also what we call a geolocation architecture. So if somebody has that particular app, it can be able to determine where your child is, where your child is staying, and stalk them. Okay, so if I'm in the same neighborhood and we have the apps on our devices, I will be able to locate your house. Parents even don't know how to even deactivate the location services on their phone and on their tablet and stuff like that. So please watch Tender as well. And this one is one of the dangerous applications. Sorry, I'm just about telling this to finish. So yes, happy to for me. Let me finish. Now, ASK.F and what we call Axe.F is also what we call it. It's a very interesting application. <laughs> and I was telling those people who joined us yesterday that. It's like you go to a movie center and then everybody in the night, in the in, in the night movie, everybody in the audience is covered with darkness. And then all of us look at somebody on the stage performing the performer. Okay. So this app is what we call the question and answer app. Okay, so you come on the stage and everybody on the app is Muslim. So you come on and they ask me any question you want. Okay, so you come and say, can anybody ask me any question they want? They ask you questions and you answer them. Some of them ask you silly questions, some of them ask exciting questions, some of them ask funny questions, and people are laughing over. Now, what's the danger? Everybody inside that room, if it's a movie center, it's anonymous. So it's like you're in a movie center, you're the same performance, somebody insults your mother. How would you see, how would you know the person? 
because everybody inside sitting in the movie center is actually covered in darkness. And that's one of the dangers. When people are clothed in darkness, in an anonymity, they are dangerous people to handle. And that's the reason that is happening. So that's not the risk. The risk is also that it's all this written 18, it has a lot of features. People are bullied aggressively on ASK. And I know that most of the apps even are mentioned, most of you parents don't even have awareness of them. You don't know what they exist. So at least I have your children. They are not on, only on Facebook and Instagram. They are apps like I could them. So please note this. And kick is an interesting app. So kick. 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 So kick has a purpose. What is the purpose of kick? This application is also for test, okay? But it's test messages that are done in a high speed. Users are allowed to send pictures and also what we call bubble nest test. And that bubble is the most, I was showing a, a GIF earlier on, like when you are typing things and you're having a feel of the test moving up and down and, there's a vibration, there are sketches, and it gives a sign for young people. It's different from most of the apps that are used. The risk most people are going through is that because this app allows you to share so many content, not just as well as citation, it shares so many content that terminals can use. I missed a slide here, sorry. So let's go to the final one. I'll talk about this now. Now, this is called a Snapchat, and most of parents we know it. But Snapchat is a very interesting application and actually was established to solve one of the biggest problems most young people, even in Ghana, there's some of the few work we have done around. I did a program in Kumas some years back at the university. And when I did a presentation to the lecture, one, one, one of them I told me a very interesting story. I really couldn't imagine it was even true that somebody was actually sending her naked pictures around and it was accepted. And the guy was demanding for more new pictures every day. Okay. And that was very serious. So this platform came with a promise that if we're a young person and you want to do okay, like you want to do something, like send pictures of your new pictures to friends, the typical traditional application like WhatsApp, when I send my pictures to you, you can download it and put it in your phone drive, for example. But this platform gave a promise that if you can shuttle that up, uh, your content, if I'm sending my picture to my girlfriend and I shuttle it for 10 seconds, my girlfriend, I just put her hand on it and I start reading 10, 9, 8, 7, it gets to zero the picture will disappear. The promise of Snapchat is that that picture that your work, boyfriend just watches cannot be saved on his phone and it will not be saved on the app as well. So it's gone. That is why the, 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 the logo of this application is a ghost. Okay, that's a ghost logo, yeah, the symbol of a ghost. So this is the promise, okay? The purpose of the app like many other apps, was intended for good people. And this intent was also to protect sex tests. Okay, those who want to actually be naughty and content and all of that. But the risk is, the reason why one is that, you know, because children are told that their, their pictures will not be saved on the app and by a potential cyber criminal, they are very careless about the use of the app. And most of them are using it for very, very interesting and unwholesome way. Now, the one of the I want to, one of the things I want to state here is that there is no application anywhere in the world that when you want to take the data from it, you can't take it. Okay. I have I can I can promise you that any picture anybody sent to me on Snapchat, even if he actually shouted it for 10 seconds, I can take the picture. I can take the video and save it. And the company application, the company itself, we don't even know that I've done that. There are so many ways I can do this. 
And that's why I want you to go, let's go home and talk to our children about uh, an app like Snapchat and it's dangerous if we are using it as a young person. I wish I could talk about Vespa. <laughs> let me talk about Vespa. Forgive me, let me talk about Vespa. It's one of the things that I, 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 I really can't, can't, can't um, avoid talking about. Let me talk about it briefly. So, Whisper is also another app that is it's an app for confession. You know, so if you are Catholic, you know that Catholic has a um, confession session where you go and meet the priest and confess your wrongs to the priest and the priest bear you up in prayer. And this app works similar like that. that particular app. So, Whisper allows you to go and express yourself to audience that are not emotional. Okay, so let me let me take my time to with that. So we, can, we can have homes, for example, where mother is straight, father is straight, and a child cannot talk to mother, cannot talk to father. The child is always on his phone, and everybody is busy. And most young people, as they grow, they have a lot of biological issues, they have social issues. They want people to listen to them. The struggle I've seen, and some of the few people I've encountered in my talks in the university, is that some people want somebody to talk to. Now, the challenge with most parents is that because they don't have time, they assume that the internet can be a babysitter, the phone can be a companion for their children, and they are comfortable. But what this application is doing is that it gives them a hearing ears. It gives them a hearing ears. And what does it mean? It means that the child can go and tell, uh, go and tell them that, please, my name is Isaac. And I'm struggling with masturbation. I don't know how to do it. And somebody will come and say, well, Don't worry. I'm also struggling with masturbation for their friend. And then they become to connect themselves and become friends. And then they can share a lot of things together and all of that. Now, what people can do with this is that a cyber criminal can come on the platform and use the same strategy, have years for your child, and groom them out of their principle, and even send them to the arms of what we call the dark web, and actually create a whole kind of world for them. Like, there's somebody who gets shocked. Say, my child went to university, and all of a sudden, he hasn't even, I want to join ISIS. Ah, how, how, how did that happen? Somebody is grooming the person online, using some of the tools available, and you have to be very much concerned about this. I want to so skip Tumblr. I want to go to Instagram. Sorry, maybe I will do another session for this one. Let's go on the final one called the Nikola app, and then we finish. So, we call apps, okay, or apps that were actually created for people who want to hide content okay, from their, on their device. You are a married woman, you are a married man, and you want, don't want your husband or your wife to see a lot of things on your phone. What you do, you can actually go on a very popular app like Calculator, okay? So, in a minute, let me, let me, let me show you something. I'm, I'm actually sharing my my phone my, yeah, for you. But this is my, my phone. You can see my phone here. And if you look on this phone, I'm just, I want to just calculate something. So I just say, I want calculator. So I type calculator. It will be a bit slow, don't worry, it will come. So I type calculator. I'm just, I'm just doing this one demo for you. Then. So I have calculator here. So I type calculator. Now, when I type the calculator, you see that on my on my screen, you have two calculators that appear. One is black with a blue, and then there's another calculator that is by the side. Now, if we look at these two calculators, if I have three, three calculators, uh -huh. then two of them are not calculators. Those with a black and blue, and the one with a black and another pinkish color, they are not actual calculators. But I can still use it, so I can just take this calculator and open it, the first one, and I have a calculator. Okay, so this calculator, I can just say one, uh, five uh, times five. And it gives me an answer. So I can do anything in calculator does. But the truth of the matter is that this particular app is not a calculator. It's called a liquid app. It's an app I'm using to hide other applications. I'm using to hide things that I don't want anybody to see. So if I just type my password, I use a password to form this one. I, I type a password, maybe 1980, then my password. And then I type uh, 1980 is my password. So I type 1980, and then I go and type equal to. The app changes. 
something else. It's not completed again. Okay. Now, what's happening is that behind us, I have seen everything I don't want anybody to see. There's an app, it's a video, it's a picture. I don't want anybody to see. It's behind this computer. So when you take my phone, I can give my phone to you. There's no password on it. And you can just be playing with it and then be seeing all the things on my phone. But there's a very popular that's maybe a music app or a calculator or any app that has all the things I don't want you to see embedded under it. And most young people are using these applications a lot on their phones or the digital apps. We call it the secret application. So if you look on your screen, see everything there, like normal, and there's no fast on their phone, they're not hiding anything from you. But after you see a calculator that is normal, calculator that you because if I see a calculator my child, so what's a big deal? There's no problem. But under the calculator, there may be a lot of content that are dangerous. There may be an app like Kick, there may be an app like Whisper, there may be an app like whatever under those platform. And that's one of the things I want to look at on your child device. Just be engaging. It's important. The name, another name for it is called what we call the good app. Sorry, my time is up. My time is up. <laughs> let me let me see what I can do. Uh, to, um, let me see. So what do you do as a parent? I mentioned a few of them. Uh, as a parent, one of the, you have to you have to start having a conversation with your children about the risk of the internet, and that's what I don't see many parents doing. Many parents even don't play the game their children are playing the platform with them, and it's dangerous. Be your child's friend. I'm saying that the children are spending more than 50% on the average of their time with the internet. You can't afford to have a discussion around their experience and what they do on the platform. And on that note, I want to say thank you for your audience. And let's have some questions if you have them. So, talk is on the platform, so you will be assisting me to answer the questions. If you have a question, please use the time for me to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, very, very much. That was great. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> All right. So any questions from anybody? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. OK. So if you have a question, let's have it. And let's discuss the question briefly before we get started. OK. Let me, if, if, if you can um, ask the question, please um, put the question in the chat, uh, chat box. I'll read it here and respond to them, okay? Please. All right. Okay, so the slide will be shared. Okay, so before we sign up complete, you can just leave your email address in the chat console. I will send a slide to you. And then I will send the... Uh, um, uh, the video link on YouTube to you, and you can um, actually take it up and watch it 